200 million dollar hack plus the next big political FUD involving China tumbles Bitcoin down 2% overnight back below $23,000. In this video, we're going to analyze the price action. We're also going to look at the latest news to find out what is going on, what is causing this price to hit and how much lower can we go. Guys, don't forget to smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe as always. Check out the links in the description if you want to buy any crypto with our amazing bonuses. And as you can see here, guys, 22,800. Officially, we are back below our 200 week moving average on bitcoin which we worked so hard to reclaim and we've started the week off pretty red today as you can see falling from highs of around 24,600 when we thought we were getting the breakout faked back out straight back into uh below 24,000 region and now heading back towards the top of our channel remember the the channel with the green lines where we took ages to finally break out rejected by 24 back in the channel hit 24 rejected again are we going to fall into the channel now as you can see we've got this uptrend Right, and this is our hope. We've got a higher, higher lows, and we've just about posted a higher high there. You remember in yesterday's video, I warned on the daily chart. This is the hourly chart, but on the daily chart, I warned you yesterday that there was hidden bearish divergence, and you can see that did play out over the next 24 hours. We did indeed head to the downside. I still think there's a room here from a technical perspective to move to the downside. I'm going to show you why that blends in with the fundamentals shortly and some of the macro news we've got. But some room here is why don't you, is you can head down to 22,000 here and collect some support from here okay so if you will follow my twitter yesterday i tweeted out the fact that we we could be doing something like this which is fine as long as we post as long as we do curl around here and obviously go post a higher high to keep this uptrend now things are going to be difficult right this is not going to be easy if we do lose this level and start falling back into our channel then i'm going to be warning of another worrying pattern which is known as an m pattern a double top pattern right so this could be forming a double top pattern with neckline here okay so that's what i'm looking out for also because that could be sending us to the bottom of our channel which is not good that is then back at the lines of 18,700. So this battle around here is really, really crucial. And we are literally, uh, a, a, you know, a bunch of hourly candles away from this. And in, within a day or two, we will know which direction we're we heading. Are we going to get that curve back to the upside? Are we going to lose this to the downside? In which case things could get nasty. If we keep coming back into this channel, this is not good. This is showing that the bears are in control. I mean, this is the brief respite we've had. And it just shows that the bears wouldn't even let us rally towards 28, 29, 30 even. They're just going to say, you know what? You're not having any joy you're not having any success with throwing you back to the downside so loads to fight for here on the bitcoin price and it does not help that we've had a major hack yes nomad bridge was hacked and drained of nearly 200 million dollars in exploit guys this is not the first time we've seen cross chains getting exploited right i've told you guys plenty of times try to avoid these at any cost for those who aren't familiar with what these do cross chains allow you to bridge your tokens from one native blockchain where the coin is supposed to be across to another and the way it does it is let's say you're trying to move bitcoin and you're trying to move it to a blockchain where it doesn't belong <laughs> what it does is it locks your bitcoin on the original network and then it gives you a wrapped bitcoin on the other side but then where the bitcoin is is a target for a hack okay very important it's a target for a hack because if you lose that bitcoin you have no backing you have no collateral you just have this fake wrapped bitcoin with access to nothing so we're seeing a bunch of cross-chain hacks and like i've said to you guys if you can at all avoid it stay away from these wrapped assets just like i said stay away from these crazy yield generating projects especially in a bear market guys please just be super super cautious i know i'm cautious generally all the time but try to just be a little bit more cautious in some in these bear markets when hacks so high liquidity is low maybe some of these projects are taking shortcuts in terms of their security and some of their staffing you don't know what's going on behind the scenes so we have to be pragmatic right how do we know if some of these smaller cross chains during this bear market aren't really struggling with funding they lay off a couple of their security guys and suddenly more weaknesses and exploits are coming up right now the interesting thing here with the nomad bridges like i said they had coinbase and open sea amongst their seed investors months ago so they were valued at over 200 million dollars um they was they were positioning themselves as as the guys who uh um, are against this stuff right who are the safer alternative to the other bridges now if you want a deep technical breakdown of exactly what happened sam cz son did a really good breakdown of this feel free to go through this a really good technical breakdown of what happened i did have a flick through this um but as you can see here on DeFi llama uh it literally falls off the chart let me see if i can bring that in just there uh, as you can see just there behind my head you can see that drops all the way to zero and it's a drain now the interesting thing this was not one bandit who hacked the system this was an 
exploit which was found in the system. Big difference, right? There's a big difference. There's an exploit which is found and it was a free for all. Anybody could do it. People were copy and pasting transactions, changing the address to their address and they were getting free money at, and they drained the Nomad network, okay? So really important. Let's not forget, guys, in April, Ronin Bridge was attacked for $600 million. That was the bridge that powered Axie Infinity. We also had the $300 million, uh, which was drained from the Wormhole Bridge, which is obviously associated with Solana as well, which wreaked havoc across the Solana blockchain at the time as well. So this is a very common thing. So please, please, please keep your phone safe. And this is not great for crypto, right? One one week we have the news of, you know, something like Luna. Then we have Voyager. Then we have a Celsius. If it's not a Celsius, then it's Ronin Bridge getting hacked on Axie Infinity. If it's not that, then it's this. This is constantly keeping us down and like i've said this is a common theme you'll hear me say this a lot short-term thinking laziness is what is affecting our growth here on crypto nothing else right it's us making the same mistakes which time and time again we kept saying we're going to be better than traditional finance but we're not it's degen plays it's greed it's rehypothecation it's over leverage right it's all these same issues which come up and that is the issue that's happening happening here okay very very important another thing to report on is we have the cpi reading coming out on august the 10th that is next wednesday mark your calendars for that that will be the july cpi report remember i'm not going to get super excited on the recovery of bitcoin i, I believe in a relief rally like i've said many times in my videos i'm not going to believe in a long-term rally just yet until i see that cpi figure come down let it come down let it come down drastically over the next couple of readings and we can feel confident that the fed are going to start to u-turn on their rate decisions fear and greed index has dropped to 31 that makes sense again if this was to refresh tomorrow with bitcoin continuing to stay where it's at uh, below 23 no doubt that would notch down a little bit more maybe to 29 this is the other piece of fud I wanted to bring up with you guys. Pelosi to visit Taiwan. And I think a lot of people are sleeping on this, guys. Just as one, you know, geopolitical issue, kind of the market had some hopium last week. They were getting over the fact of the FOMC meeting and they understood what was going on. Company earnings have been going okay. Pelosi now apparently is trying to visit Taiwan. And the issue here is China has warned that its military would never sit idly by if Pelosi were to visit Taiwan, the self-ruled island claimed by Beijing. Okay. Okay, so this is causing a bunch of issues. You can see the pre-market is quite heavily down, to be honest. I mean, 1% down on the NASDAQ in the futures, uh, 0.77 on the S&P and 0.5, half a percent here on the Dow. So it looks like the market wants to open up in red. No doubt that will have an effect on Bitcoin. And Bitcoin's got to come down to this key level and collect some support here. Let's also take a look at the dollar index. And this, you'll see, is having a positive day here. If you look at the daily candles here on the dollar index, after numerous days in the red, we're seeing a little bit of green pop up, right? A green day here on the dollar index. Remember, Bitcoin is inversely correlated to this. People move across to the dollar in times of fear. And that is why perhaps we're seeing a little bit of a tumbling on Bitcoin, along with a positive day for the dollar index. Remember, if we take a look at this, what is the dollar index experiencing? Remember, when we fell here, I said this could allow Bitcoin to run. And that's exactly what's happening. But the dollar index just seemingly only wants to collect support, right? It's done it before. It came down and then it went roaring to a new high. It came down, roars to a new high. And every time it roars to a new high, it's going to push Bitcoin lower and lower. So what we don't want here is we don't want dollar index to go and do this because that could signal a week of pain here on Bitcoin. But even better, what we do want to see, which would be amazing, is if the dollar index can somehow flip trend and lose its EMA ribbon to the downside. It's not done so in a severe way for a very long time. Look at me zooming out here. The last time it would have done that severely was when it fell from about this range here at 93 down to the bottom at 89 and Bitcoin would have uh, rallied. Uh, and then we would have, we want to see that same thing. Remember, if I zoom out here on the weekly on the on the dollar index, you would to you'll see two peaks here on the dollar index. The first one happening here, uh, December 6, 16. And then you saw this other peak where it topped out at COVID. And after both these periods, you saw a nice surge in the Bitcoin price. We're waiting to find out when is the next peak on the do dollar index? And when do we get the next big role reversal where it starts moving to the downside. That is when uh, Bitcoin can be set up for a big move here to the upside. Let's also take a look at dominance and dominance you're seeing here similarly having a positive day and it makes sense. Two days in a row now of dominance ticking up slightly. Now dominance when crypto is red on the day is just showing that the markets are a little bit fearful. You can see alts are getting smashed today. I mean you're talking 3% uh, down on Ethereum giving up a lot of the gains we worked so hard for. Phantom down 4% today. Near pro uh, Atom down 4%. Uh, Matic down 3%. Avalanche 
Crunch down 4%, 10% down on Cadena, Coty down 7%. So the smaller market caps obviously are getting hit much bigger, but even some of the larger projects here down 3 to 4%, 5% as well on some of these altcoins. You're seeing that rotate into Bitcoin, which is very normal phenomena when the market's a little bit fearful. People just lighten up on some of their altcoins and, and just move them across into this more stable asset, Bitcoin. Uh, which is unlikely to uh, fluctuate in as much of a volatile manner. Few important earnings before the open in the next couple of hours, Uber and BP. After the close, you've got AMD, PayPal, Airbnb and Starbucks. So a packed day today with earnings. And that's what's going to lead the sentiment here in the market. We need the market to feel positive for Bitcoin to have a run. And at the moment, yesterday and today, the market's not feeling super excited, right? You can, you can't really feel that hopium, unfortunately. You've got now this cloud around the whole Taiwan issue. Uh, you've got this issue with the hack from a crypto perspective issue. So even if you did argue that equity markets wanted to have a positive day, if we keep getting negative news on a crypto specific basis like these hacks, it's going to mean that we can miss out on green days on NASDAQ uh, and Bitcoin doesn't follow suit, right? So we need to make sure that we keep our house in order in the crypto space and then wait for risk to turn on from a macro perspective. Then we can see good days on Bitcoin. Hope you guys are staying safe out there. Hope you're trading well. More importantly, is this the time to dollar cost average, right? What am I doing in my portfolio? Particularly, I'm not chasing these crazy green candles. On these pullbacks, I'm more interested. So when it comes back to that trend line at that 22,000, I'll take some small nibbles. But what I'm more interested in is if we lose that trend line, if we back enter back in that channel between 18 and a half and 22,000, I'll get nibbling uh, with some serious dca in that period again. So again, chasing that pump out to 24. I said to you guys, I'm not chasing that. Uh, if we break a Above 24, I'm happy to enter into a long trade up towards 28, 29, 30 range. But in terms of my long-term portfolio, I just want to average in in that channel. Okay. Hope you guys are staying safe out there. The key is to dollar cost average and hold, right? If you look at the stats of what effective strategy, what strategies are the best, is to find the plays you have high conviction in and dollar cost and hold. Okay. And I'm going to be doing that using OKX links in the description. They've got an amazing new feature, which again, I'm not being paid to show you guys. It's an affiliate link in the description, but I'm not getting being paid or sponsored to show this to you. But I'm literally only using it because nobody else has done this. And I can't believe FTX, Coinbase, none of these guys are doing this. It's an amazing pie feature where I can say, okay, I want to buy some uh, uh I want to buy some BTC and set a pie, right? So I can say I beat in this pie. I've got all my favorite layer one plays okay, outside of Ethereum. And I can put them all in there, Phantom, Algorand, let's say Solana, Cardano, and I can split the percentages and I can say to that pie, I just want to allocate $1,000 a week, let's say, and it'll just do it for you, right? So really smart long-term strategy, keeps your emotion away and just means you're constantly adding into the market without getting blinded uh, by the movements in the market and the volatility. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to watch my Phantom video, which exposes one hidden weakness in the Phantom, pro in the Phantom tokenomics which a lot of people aren't telling you about. But as you guys know, I'm transparent. I explain it and break it down here on this channel. So go watch that. Comment over there as well. And I'll see you in the next one.